Let's move on to Pete Hegseth because there's still drama swirling around Pete and whether or not he's going to get confirmed. He seems to be very um, bullish on the the chances that he has with the senator. He's, he's been going around and meeting with senators all day yesterday. I think he plans to do the same thing today. He, of course, is being defended by many, 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 many people that he worked with directly, including his two co-hosts of the weekend show. Uh, Rachel Campos Duffy tweeted yesterday to, I think it was NBC News who originally broke the ridiculous story about the drinking and all this stuff. So she wrote a diatribe to NBC saying, you should be ashamed of yourself for posting these lies. Why don't you ask me? I've had a front seat to Pete Hegseth's life and maturation. I've seen him turn his life around spiritually as a father, a husband over the last seven years. Um, she talks about how much she admires him because he's be he's worked so hard to become the man that he is today. She was just one person who defended him. There were many, many others, including his other co-host, uh, Will Kane, who said, your story is horseshit, NBC I News. Put my name on it, on the record. It'll be your only on the record source. Signed, the guy who sat next to him for eight hours every week for five years, starting at 6 a.m. Yeah. I love that. I do, too. I mean, it's just such crap. Yeah, and it's like, I, I, I think it was uh, Senator Kennedy who was asked about him. And he said, he said like every saint has a past and every sinner has a future. Mm -hmm. That's what he said. And I love that because it's true. You know what? So we did some stuff. Right. Did you, I, I've done some stuff. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? We've all done some stuff. God help me if I ever ran for office. You know what I mean? Like people do stuff. So he drank some beer. Like he did, like, right. he did some womanizing. I, he's a good guy. He is a fa like every single time he gets off the air because I watch that on the weekends because I don't really like the weekday show and I don't have time to watch it during the week. But <coughs> on the weekends when they get off the air, he's like, go to church. He's he is a faith centered guy. I like him. Mm. There are guys that have passed and then they turn their lives around. And I don't even think he was that bad. I mean, in compared in compares compared to other guys, you know, right. I mean? So I mean, he did some stuff. People do some stuff. You know, he's whatever. I don't care. I don't <laughs> care. What can he do now? What kind of a guy is he right now? You know, mm -hmm. and he's a good guy. So everybody shut up. I know. But I mean, the, the stories keep swirling. There's still a lot of doubt. It sounds like oh from some Republican senators. I know it's super frustrating. Uh, JD Vance had tweeted as soon as his Pete Hegseth's mom was on, whoops, was on uh, Fox yesterday, as we mentioned. He said, Pete Hegseth's mom on Fox and Friends this morning defending her son. She points out that she sent an emotional email and then apologized two hours later. The media never talks about the apology because they're trying to destroy him and not tell the truth. And the media, which is exactly right. They should have never published it, but they're disgusting no. and they did. It was such an invasion of privacy, what they did. Shame and then I saw people were criticizing her for going on to like criticizing him for sending his mom oh. to defend him, which is such bullshit. They're the one that New York Times is the one that brought his mom into yeah, this news story. Yep. Of Amen. course she should go and defend herself. And so she did. And here's a little she was on for, I think, a good 15 minutes. But here is the more critical part of the interview that she did on Fox and Friends. Say is I am here to tell the truth. Uh, to tell the truth to the American people and tell the truth to the senators on the Hill, mm -hmm. especially our female senators. I really hope that you will not um, listen to the media and that you will listen to Pete. Well, and you're here to tell us because you are in the news now. So yeah. why did you write that email in 2018? Right. Well, let's what go was back, going on? Right. Let's go back seven years, which if we all went back seven years, we would we would see that maybe we were not the people we are today. But um, they were going through, Pete and his wife at the time, were going through a very difficult divorce. It was a very emotional time, and I'm sure many of you across the country understand how difficult divorce is on a family. Uh, there's emotions. Um, we say things, and I wrote that in haste. I wrote that with deep emotions. I wrote that as a parent, and about... Two hours later, I should, I should, my husband tells me I should think through things a little <laughs> bit more. But uh, Pete and I are both very passionate people. Uh, I wrote that out of love. 
And about two hours later, I retracted it with an apology email, but nobody's seen that. So um, it was it was a difficult time. I, I want to say something about the media. And um, part of today is to discredit the media and how they operate. Um, when they contact you, um, I let a few phone calls go, but then they call you and say they threaten you. That's the first thing they do. Right. They say, unless you make a statement, we will publish it as is. And I think that's a despicable way uh, to, to treat anyone. Threats are, are dangerous, and they're, they, they're hard on families. She's just gross. Yeah, it is gross. First of all, he looks a lot like her. Genetics are really he cool. He looks yeah. so much like his mom. She's a beautiful woman. This is also stupid. You know, the fact that they took that letter and they published it, mm -hmm. they're the, they're the assholes. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. And I, you know, listen, it was a very stern letter. She was obviously, like she said, full of emotion. Mm -hmm. It was a super tumultuous divorce. You know, there was custody issues involved. She was worried about his treatment of the mother of his children at the time. And she had thoughts about it as most mothers do. And Usually, you don't ever stop parenting. I could totally see myself doing something similar if I was that disappointed with my own kid and then having regrets about it and also working past it. Like, that's what families do. And so for the New York Times to be like, see, here's his own mother doesn't think he should be in this role. It's just nonsense. It's just in 2024, all of a sudden, all of this stuff is our business. Remember back in the 70s and 80s when none of this stuff was our business? Yeah. I don't care about this stuff. His family stuff is none of my concern. Can he do the job? Can he do the job? That's what yep. I want to know. And you know what? He can. I think exactly. he can. That's how I feel. That's how I feel about all of them across the board. I don't want to know about their family business. I don't want people to know about my family business. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's like, you want to know about dysfunction? I got it in my family. Y'all don't want to hear about it. Seriously. <laughs> I mean, there's, this is the thing. Can I do the job? That's what people should want to know about me when I go into a job interview. They should not want to know about my family dysfunction. I would right. imagine that a lot of you guys have family dysfunction. When you go into a job interview, do you have to talk about it? This is absurd. Why are it they is. talking about any of this stuff? This is such nonsense. Well, and then, of course, there was the Wall Street Journal story yesterday that we talked about. Like the headline yesterday was, oh, uh, Trump is already thinking about pulling his nomination of Pete Hegseth in favor of Governor Ron DeSantis to lead uh, the Department of Defense instead. So that rumor started swirling. And Pete was asked about that while he was on the way to meet with various senators yesterday on the Hill. Have you had any conversations with the president-elect about replacing you? I spoke to the president-elect this morning. He said, keep going, keep fighting. Find you all the way. So you're in this all the way. Why would I back down? I've always been a fighter. I'm here for the more fighters. Um, this is personal passion for me. So you're not withdrawing your name from consideration, just to be clear. I'm meeting all day with senators. And then your mom was just on Fox. She says that you are a change. Hi. So he talked to Donald Trump yesterday morning. Donald Trump said, keep fighting. I'm, I've got your back. So I don't know where that story, I don't know what the Wall Street Journal, I don't know where that story originated or I don't know what it was about, but it doesn't seem that that is the case. I, I think that I responded online yesterday to some post about him. It was, you know, regarding the media and like people like her. And I think I actually, on our behalf, which is probably not appropriate, but I think <laughs> I wrote F them keep fighting mm -hmm. because this is so stupid. All of it's stupid. This is what they do. You guys, this is what the yep. left does this is what politics. I mean, it's just, it's so inconsequential. All of it. It's just noise. All of it's noise. They're trying to destroy this guy just like they try to destroy everybody else. Do you have to do this in the private sector? Do you have to defend your morality? I mean, really, do you have to defend everything you've ever done in your whole life? He's interviewing for a job. Can he do the job? This is so yes. stupid. It <laughs> it's is. It's dumb. It's asinine. And the reporters would not stop pestering him. Anytime he walked out of a senator's office yesterday, they were on him. And finally, he said this. Uh, as far as everything else, I had a chance to sit down with Megyn Kelly today for an hour. 
I refer you to that interview. She asked probably all the questions you guys would like to ask. So you come and that she did. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. So uh, with just a couple clips uh, from that interview with Megyn Kelly. So she asked him specifically, what is the status of Trump? Like, where is he? Wh- what is what's his standing on you right now? And here's what he said. Will you commit to not drinking on the job? I'm sure. All right. So it's been an all out assault since Trump named you. No doubt. Um, I mean, from alleged rape allegations to allegations about your marriage to financial mismanagement uh, allegations at your uh, companies that you ran your your foundations I should say how's it going with Trump right now is he so far standing by you and have you spoken to him I spoke to him this morning Megan I mean he's amazing he's a fighter he's been through this himself uh, and he told me the last thing he said to me uh, well two things he said to me when I left his office when he chose me uh, was well, besides what he said about being a warfighter, we can get into that, was uh, you're going to need to be tough as shit. You're going to need to be tough as shit. But he paused again as I was walking away and said, but you're the man for this moment. I right. chose you because you're the guy that's going to put the warfighters first. We haven't had that. We need a guy that's kicked down doors and understands the consequences of war and why um, us deterring war, fighting it, and winning it is important. I mean, he gets it. He, and we can get into the policy of all of that. Um, but ultimately, he re- reiterated the same thing this morning. Hey, Pete, I got your back. It's a fight. They're coming after you. Get after it. The- yeah, I hope that's true. I mean, I hope that Trump sticks by him. I hope so, too. And I think he is the right guy for the job. I think mm-hmm. he is the guy for the moment. So, And he's a disruptor, too. And they don't like that. And so that makes it even more obvious to me that he should be the guy that does the job because they don't Mm -hmm. like him. So put him in there.